Hello everyone. Hope you're doing fine on this lovely day. As per Omnita standard, we'll wait just a few minutes before we get started to make sure everyone that's supposed to be here is here. So uh, in the meantime, you'll uh, get to watch me, I guess. Uh, but um, I'm sure you're going to survive that too. So for those of you who have already come on here, uh, so throughout today we have the left pane, uh, or the right side pane, I mean, uh, which uh, where you can post your questions, uh, as you can see as you have the chat, so if you want to tell everyone else something, or you have the question sections which you can use to ask any and all questions. And as per usual, we, I'll try to take question as we go, but it, there will be a lot of screen sharing and showing today, which means I won't see uh, the questions uh, all of the time. So I'll try to hop back to them. And if they're applicable, I'll take them right away. Otherwise, we'll make sure that we try to answer as many uh, questions as we can on the end, uh, where we have a uh, answer some questions section. There, we've got some more people coming on. So, hi, welcome to you too. Uh, and we'll get started in just about a minute or so. So, just leaving some time for the last few stragglers to get online. And as I said before, please use the questions and or the chat section if you have any and all questions. It's one out to the right. I guess that way on the camera, but yeah, my right. <laughs> So let's get started. A very warm welcome to all of you who have come on here today to this updated webinar on how to build a CRM in monday.com. So this is version 2.0 or probably at this point 5.6 or something like that. But alas, very much welcome. So uh, for today, I'm just going to do a bit of talking about what, why did we need to update, mm, update this at all? And then we're going to get straight into a more show and tell and show you how to do different things within the Monday CRM. And then we'll end up round off with some questions and answer. And as you, we all know, there's a question section, uh, which you have on the right side of your screen. Please fill that in. As I said, there will be a lot of screen sharing from my end, which means I don't see the questions all the time. So I will pop back every now and again and check if you have any questions. And if they're applicable, I'll try to answer them as we go. But otherwise, I promise you, I'll try to have everything answered uh, by the mm, uh, questions and answers section in the end. So uh, with that then, so there's a bit of a difference between when I first this, did this webinar back in 2021. Uh, and that biggest difference is that Monday did not have its CRM product, which it has today. You can actually see now I haven't updated my logo there for the Monday sales CRM because it's just now Monday CRM since just a few days ago, they ditched the sales part and it's now Monday CRM, but Monday have built that product. When we did this first in 2021, uh, we had to basically help you set everything up, all the types of connectors, everything. Uh, 
there were a fair few number of features that just wasn't there in email integration in terms of email and activities, what wasn't there. Um, the item cards had barely come, or if they even had come when I first did, can't even remember now, it's a few years ago. So there was a lot of differences. So it was, it was a quite workable Siren back then, but it missed some features. But that was meant everything we had to build it ourselves. Now we have the Monday sales CRM. So a lot of things is actually built for us. So it's not as much about how do I build it? How do I construct it? It's more how can I mold it to fit me? And how can I maybe bring more features and or more comfort of life kind of functionality into it that uh, we might feel are missing? Uh, and also there's a whole host of things we can do on top of it, but where we need to leave Monday as the second and then add some of our own injections into the system. But I'll show you that as well. Uh, so with that, if no one has any questions on those few brief lines, which I don't think you do, uh, I'm actually going to share my screen and let's pop into Monday. Because that's why we're here, right? So I'm actually gonna share a whole. Da, 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 da. See, I'll do it like this instead. There you go. And I'm gonna share a whole window instead. There, and let's pop into Monday. So you should now be able to see my screen. So as we can, as I said, up here in the left-hand corner, we can see the sales part of the CRM is actually gone. So it's now just Monday CRM, Monday Customer Relationship Management. Uh, as we can see, I'm not popping in straight into what would be what you get when you install a template. This is actually more akin to how, how me and my team work with Monday. Uh, so I've added a few uh, leads here. As we can see, I'm in the demo section because there's actually a lot of things going on, which I won't show you now because that's actual data. Uh, but we can see we have new leads and they are grouped. So we can see I have my stages. New lead, tempting, that contacted, follow and so on and so forth. We also have the nurture function where we, yeah, let's uh, say we, we start talking to a lead and it's not the right time now, but we still want to nurture. So we have a cadence for that. And we have a purge and that I get a lot of questions for. Why do we have a purge functionality or a purge tag? Well, what this actually does in our system is there's a whole lot of checks being made. If I press this, now we can see no contact is connected to Ericsson, which I just put in but we have a company card. What it basically does, it checks if there's a contact to this, it checks, do we have any opportunities, any deals, any reason why we need to keep this data because we might have contractual needs. Otherwise it will purchase from the system because when we're building a CRM, we're not just having a board. One, one database. We're actually relating several of them. As we can see out here to my left, we can see we have leads. That's one data type. We have companies, contacts, and opportunities. That's data types in their own right, uh, which contain metadata and so on and so forth. So due to me being European, hence I live with GDPR. Um, I think it's actually a piece of rather good legislation, but still I need to... Uh, comply with it. Uh, that means if someone asks me to delete their data or I don't have a reason to have it, I may not. I may for a certain time period, but then I need to delete it. That's why we have the purge. And that's so we don't forget the data because as I said, there are many different data types stored at different places that may contain personal identifiable information, PII, uh, and that need to be uh, deleted if I don't have a reason for that storage. And what my purge algorithm here does is basically it goes into those places and it also and deletes the data if it doesn't find a reason for it 
for the that data that so it needs to be um, be contained still or stored. So that's why we have purge states. So that's basically a comfort of life and also uh, a functionality that makes it easier uh, easier for us to comply with uh, the legislation of the European Union. Uh, and as well, if you're American watching this, yeah, um, what it looks like is that it looks like you're uh, you're more or less are going to copy or make your own version of the GDPR in a not too distant future from the last I heard. So, but what we can see here, I'm on my lead table. Of course, I can go in and I can add my leads. I can click in to add a new lead, or I can add it straight on here. I can just start typing. We can see I have a fair few things, but I've actually hidden most of them. And this comes down to my view of what is it we're actually presenting. I'm only trying to present for the user the most relevant data set uh, I can. The rest, I actually hide in the item cards. We can see I actually have 35 hidden columns in here. And there's probably a fair few others that we could uh, ditch as well. But I have a few. But to start off with, uh, since we're Omnitas and we like to do things our way, let's add a lead the Omnitas way. So let's say we go to Endo. Say Endo is basically crunch base for UK companies, or if you're a Swede or a Norwegian or a Dane, Prof uh, or uh, Alabulog for that matter. But let's say we're gonna we're searching for uh, uh, some companies in here. We have Bright Box, and I think they're actually called Brighter Box. Yeah, there we go. So I found a company. Hmm. The, this should be a good lead, maybe. I can click into it. And what we've actually done is we have a small Chrome extension up here. We call it the Omni Enricher. So what I just need to do is I need to press that one. It will now go into this page. It will take a look on the data here, and it will actually create this lead for me. So it takes a bit of time because there's actually a lot of AI involved in this. It's not like that. The AI actually needs to get the page, read the page, print out the data, and then we need to transpose it into Monday. But it takes just a minute or so. On. Oh, yeah. Here we look. Brighter Box Limited just got added. And we can see I have a reference column here. So companies, that's actually a connect to board column. So that connects into my companies register. But I can actually take a look at it here now. So we can see it has now been uh, created. Uh, here, so we can see what is it? It's a lead. We can see we got a national ID number. It found the country. It found the number of employees of that company. It didn't find the turnover. And that's not too weird because it actually says turnover is unreported. So it put it at zero. Um, but we can basically direct this AI to read this data and get all of that nice information for us. So we actually got that in there. But now, how I think from a CRM is, I think that the item card is the best way to work. And that's also, if you're coming new to Monday CRM, yes, of course, you can work in columns. But what you're probably most used to and what will probably give you the best overview of your data is the item cards. Uh, so right now we got into, so we have the, our Brightbox limited lead. Uh, we can give it a nickname because I'm not always want to say Brighter Box limited. So uh, Brighter Box, for example, as a nickname, I can give them a nickname. Why do I do that? Well, I'm going to get to that in a bit. So now we can start adding contacts as well. I can have one or more. How you set this up is depending on how you see is a lead always just one person, or is the lead the company, which can then have many contacts? So how we set this up, that's very individual to our company and our operations. But we've set it up as the lead is the company, and that might have many contacts. What I can do actually here is I can actually add a lead in here. So let's add Charlie Johnson. I think it's with one S. We can see it 
does not exist in my system. So perfect. Let's add him in then. And now some small automations will happen in the back. So we can see it automatically connected Charlie onto Riderbox Limited. And it also put Riderbox, which was the nickname we gave on him. Why is this important? Well, it actually helps me to search for stuff. So if I would search for uh, Monday, I could actually find Ron Kimi, for example, the head of CRM development at Monday, the product owner of the CRM. Uh, so I can actually find him here just by searching for that company. And that might be great if you have a lot of John Smiths or uh, Anders Andersson or whatever is your uh, country's equivalent to such a name, you might have a lot of those. And then it might be good to be able to tell which one of those are the one that's connected to the company that I'm looking for. We have that. And then we can start adding in email and phone numbers and titles. And he's actually the CEO of Brighter Rocks. What I now can do as well is I can actually hop onto LinkedIn. So I actually picked him up here. He's a lovely guy. I met him uh, the other day. Uh, and we can actually take his LinkedIn profile and paste that in too. Why do we do that then? Well, because a few things. I can also put in his website, which is www.brightyourbox.com, I believe it is. Uh, and then we can put a use case. I do this. I put use cases on because I want to track data. What are we pitching? What are we trying to talk with our clients about? What's their interest? So maybe we could go into professional services. They are recruitment companies. They're uh, into that. So let's see. Uh, let's go into... project management, that could be fine as a use case for us. And then what we can actually do, I have a quick little button down here where we can do a fair few cool stuff. Now we'll let that be because yet again, this is a lot of AI and this, how I've done this is actually, I'm using the API of the Monday CRM. So one of the best things about Monday uh, as a CRM is what it actually allows us to do. Quite a lot of the CRM products out there are quite off the shelf, whereas Monday is more akin to the big boys of the CRM world where you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of capability for customizing and doing things uh, because you want to do them. So actually, I'm here relying on Monday's open uh, API. So I'm actually using Make and actually connecting with AI in the back end here to actually try to help me to both score this company, uh, so give it a lead score, but also help me with a few other things. Uh, that does, however, take a, a few minutes to do that. So, but then we can see here, I can also set region and that's because we had on this, we do work at a lot of regions. So we can see here it's AB, which is the Swedish company. We have our mm, Danish and our Norwegian sections or the limited our uh, great British ones. Uh, so now we can see what the AI have, have actually done for me down here now is actually created a cold outreach draft for me. So it uh, has a suggestion for me for what might that subject line be. And it's tried to write something up for me. So hi, Charlie, I hope you're doing well. So what this AI have now basically been doing, it's been taking a good long look at Brighter Box's web page to understand what do they do. It also actually, and this is the reason why I pasted Charlie's LinkedIn address up here, his profile, because it also went into his profile and had a good long read and kind of saw what does Charlie do? Has he has certain types of activities or posts that he's made? Uh, what ha what is he working with? What did he work with before, etc. To try to kind of get a good grasp of who's Charlie, what makes him tick, and how would that align with uh, our products and services, basically. So it will help with that. So we can see here I have that, and since I do have emails and activities. I can be smart and I can just go 
click for new in the email. Now I didn't put in his email, otherwise it would pop in here. But I can then go template and I can just go cold AI outreach email one and I can paste in. It will fetch the subject and it will fetch the text and I can just send that. Of course, you should never send something without checking it. So you have to have a read here, make the changes you need to um, make, and then you can go and send it. It also read, uh, writes a follow-up wh while it's on it. So if Charlie doesn't respond to our first, we can have a second try at it. What it also does, if I change to my update section here, it actually also started to evaluate. So what is the due to the role and the company? So actually with AI, we're starting to have a think of what's the challenges according to what we sell to perform for our clients, of course, uh, that they have from a title perspective, from a company type of perspective, from a industry or geography and specific type of market challenges that they might have that I might be able to speak to. These are a great small add-on that we have that a lot of our clients also use. Um, if you're really interested about this, just don't hesitate, just hit me up at uh, frederick at omnitas.se. You're very much welcome to email me about it or just go to our website and click the contact form and you can book a meeting with me or one of my guys. So, but this is basically how the lead section is. So you can see in, here, big changes we did here is we actually connect to the company and contact straight away. Uh, how we used to work with this was uh, we didn't convert uh, companies uh, or leads into companies and contacts until a bit in the process when we actually qualify them due to us not wanting to bloat our CRM. With the purge functionality I talked about before, that's not as relevant. As well as Monday is right now through Monday D DB scaling. So where we could only have 10,000 items before, we can now have 100,000 items. And 1 million items is planned for uh, uh, spring next year. So we're getting there. So that type of limitations aren't really a thing that much anymore, at least if not, if you're a B2B company, because we tend to have fewer contacts and uh, companies and, and uh, yeah, fewer data points basically in our CRM than if you're a B2C company selling to basically the whole market. And I would dare to say that still Monday is not a perfect CRM if you're a B2C company, but it is very close to being perfect for a B2B company. But for B2C, we need to wait a bit until, until Monday scales up even a bit more, but coming soon. So from here, uh, let's say we ha now have Brightbox and let's qualify this. So uh, we can go on and qualify that. So yes, what happens now? So it got automatically moved into the qualify section. We can see we have our contact and we have a company. Uh, and we can see also here that the AI actually scored 75 out of 100. So we could say Charlie is a pretty good match for us at Omnitas, which is nice. And it also estimated that it should probably take about two months for me to close uh, with Charlie. Nice. Good thing to know. What happened now? Well, let's hop into opportunities. And... Duh, 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 duh. Oh, that's right. I know why. Uh, I'm going to do it like this. I made a boo boo. I forgot to put myself as the owner. Let's see here. Let's make me the owner instead. There we go. That, that would have been smart of me to do. So here we can see now it's in the analysis phases. Uh, and of course, yet again, I'm in the demo section here. So I'm hiding a fair few bit of data, but there's groups to this. And you can see I'm actually using the group by function in Monday. That's a good recommendation to use. Uh, we can see here. So I'm actually grouping by stage. So actually Monday creates the groups depending on the stages I have. And 
these are the stages that we use. So qualified alliance, validation, proposal, negotiation, and so on. Uh, but here in the opportunity section, just as in the lead section, or maybe even more importantly, is I'm hiding a heck of a lot of columns, to be, to, to be honest. You can see I'm hiding over 71 columns because I have well over 70 columns uh, to start with. And to try to scroll back and forth on that, that wouldn't be possible and it wouldn't be a good experience for anyone. So I'm, of course, using parts as well here. Why is that? Oh, maybe. Maybe I need to update that one. Something has happened always when you're trying to show something, right? There we go. Now we got it back. That's nice. So here we have my brighter box opportunity. You can see I'm the one holding in it. It's actually on a very low percentage right now in close probability, and there's no money to it. So as we can see, I have my structured deal information here, so I can choose. Basically, you need to go from left to right and top to bottom and just start filling it in. What are they? They're a new client, presumably. Uh, then I have something very special for me, so I can choose is this inbound or outbound outcome. Since I'm prospecting and doing that, that should be an outbound, right? Uh, then, yes, I do resell Monday, so I count in Monday ARR. But then we have a fair few numbers of columns. And I, I can also tell the system. The system basically gave me a month. I've set an automation that's a normal Monday automation. When I create an opportunity, the system says, OK, I'll give you a month to close it. Of course, that's not how we use that. Everything needs to be closed in a month. It's just to put a date on it. Then my sales uh, executives are expected to actually put in when they think something will close. Uh, we have the top part as well. That comes natively with Monday CRM. So we have our faces up here that we go through. Uh, but what actually happens for us as well is we have automations. We can see accounts, and that's because we handle Monday.com accounts. So actually, we have a search being made. We don't have brighter box. They're not our client in any way, shape, or form. I just want to make that clear. Uh, just found a company uh, because I talked to uh, their CEO the other day. Um, seems to be a good recruitment company of the UK. So if you're looking for someone, guys, probably hit them up. Uh, but here, we can basically connect that to our account database. But how I do it is basically because I don't just want to put in a value, right? Not an arbitrary value as a D value. I actually want to tell the system and the system should help me calculate. So what I do is I actually open my sub items because the, I use this as my order rows or order lines. So basically I just create a sub item here and then what pops up is basically my services uh, register. So what do we offer uh, from an, uh, as Omnitas? We have a few apps. We have our Omni Planner and uh, Time Reporting Solution. We, of course, do sell Monday licenses. That's one thing we do. Uh, and we sell different sort of consultations. Um, and here we can see we have Monday Consultation and Make, since we're a Make partner. Uh, and we can say and sell time bags and, and different things. OK? So but say let's use a uh, Monday license, for example. Since we work with a lot of partners, Monday, Make, etc., uh, we do need to take care of using different uh, currencies. So, for example, Monday, uh, they charge, uh, if you're from the British Isles, you'll be charged in pounds. If you're from the uh, rest of Europe, basically, you'll be charged in euros. And if you're from the United States, you'll be charged in US dollars. And if you're an Australian, yeah and it's Australian dollars, so on and so forth. But that means we need to handle a lot of different currencies because we actually calculate with all of that. So, but let's say we uh, do use euros for, uh, or actually they're British, so why not use pounds? So I can select, 
what currency will they be at? It then fetches some pricing for me. Now I've actually reconnected this to just some dummy data uh, on the back end. Uh, so I'm getting the, the standard prices because I haven't connected this to proper prices, but I can here, I should get my suggested list price. And in my case, if they have seats, uh, they already have Monday, for example. I don't know if they do this company, but if I would know, it would also automatically populate here. How many seats do they have and what are they paying? PPU stands for price per user at this moment. Then otherwise I can set my unit price. So let's set something, let's set 40 pounds, for example. I'm just taking something arbitrary in here and we can set a quantity and let's set 10. Uh, then now this is ARR and since we actually get that number from Monday, I would get that. So let's say that that should be, say, let's say $6,000 because Monday actually uh, counts everything by dollars. Uh, we can see here now, I actually got that price. So $6,000 is in Swedish and that's because I am, well, we at Omnitas, we are a Swedish company. So we do report uh, in uh, um, Swedish crowns. So hence I need to convert that. And you can see the system did that. This is actually an API integration. It's very, very easy to do. And it just takes a little bit of time, not much at all. We're not talking like a day or something to do this. We're talking an hour or two and then it's kind of done. Uh, so what I've done is I've integrated myself or my Monday account with the European Central Bank. So I actually got to know from them that $6,000 is 63,672 Swedish crowns right now. So I get that. This of course continues to update itself when I move this deal along until I close it when it stops updating. So I have the last value for it. It also takes away all my internal costs and everything, and it kind of gives me uh, uh, a revenue. That's sadly enough, not the total profit, but yeah. So that's how it does. And then it basically does the same. I can count, continue on here, add more, and let's add some uh, monday.com consultation, perhaps. Uh, consultations. And let's say they need to pay that in euros, just to choose something. Uh, I can then set a unit price. So it fetches my euro price for that one, fetches that. And let's say they're gonna buy 20 of those hours, for example. And we should now see it can. There we go. We get some numbers. And we can see up here, the deal value and the forecast values are now updated with the total from below here. And I can hop in. So we can, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, we can also see uh, when I hop in here, I can also start changing these levers. So if I go and say, this is now a proposal, I actually have this functionality. And this is a proper Monday native feature if you're on the enterprise. So basically what the system now tells me is, I need to fill these stuff in before I can move along. And they are filled in. Perfect. I'm going to also get the uh, uh, chance to change them. So I need to fill in lead attribution, use case, and the deal value before I can go into proposal. And then, I, yes, that's done. Now it changes. And what is this then? Well, you see, you have my settings in here, and we have set label change conditions. This is your required feed. It's a bit hidden, but this is where you'll find it. So if you go in here, you can actually set up what do you need to fill in to move into any of these stages. So basically, you can see here, one, I require it to have an owner. I require the deal type to fill in, the deal value, the use case, lead attribution, the about and the case. So I, I, this is basically handover information that I require my sales staff to hand over to our further on depart departments down the line. For example, your CSM needs that information or your project team that's going to help you implement Monday, etc. They will need that information. And hence, I require it to be filled in. And we can see I have different 
things that need to be filled in for different stages. And if we go for lost, then we actually have the loss reason. Why did we lose this deal? So on and so forth. So we can help and guide. And I think actually this is one place where Monday shines over a lot of other CRM systems because it doesn't just tell you which one you haven't filled in. It actually lets you fill it in as we use on my screen. I can do it from there. I don't need to go elsewhere and find that uh, field or whatever where I can input that data. I can do it straight on from there, which is great. So these are some small comf uh, creature comforts that we can add to uh, our, our Monday CRM. Makes it kind of easy, as we can see. Uh, and again, then keep on working with the cards. And I think this is the main thing. But here, when it comes to an opportunity, we might actually have a lot of data going on. So, and one thing I've learned over the years, it's usually not a good idea to just cram data on people. But what we can do, we have our cards, but I can actually create more uh, item card views. So we can see here, I have something called the in-depth view where I've hidden further more information. So I can actually create more cards depending on what I need, of course. And this is usually a good way around it. So here we can see this is the in-depth here. I don't need the email data, but here we have some general legal information, only the staff involved. I've hidden a few stuff here, uh, but here uh, we have hours because we do sell a lot of implementation hours and, and support hours and stuff like that. Uh, we have our handover brief, uh, some info that I'm going to send along for implementation. A lot of this is actually automated in the end. Uh, we can see my order rows. Here's what I've added so far to this. Uh, and then total deal costs and so on and so forth. I'm actually set this to enterprise maybe, hopefully. Uh, if you're not an enterprise, uh, if you have a Monday contact or if you're one of my clients and you're not an enterprise and you want to try it, please do tell. We can then help you activate those uh, features for a limited time period. You can try it out. It's actually a much better system that way. Uh, so if you want that, do email me and I'll see what I can do to help you. But back to the cards. Uh, divide it up. And also, as you see here, I've actually had set, I have set separate boxes for different things, and that kind of makes it easier on the eye and makes it easier to find stuff. Uh, whereas you can think if I would have everything as I have here over, over the whole space of this item card, it can be a lot of information and we're back into it's hard to find stuff. So my top tip, have those a few more of those boxes instead. That will help you out a lot. Uh, then, of course, when we finally close this one, then since we are a project based uh, and or we're, we are as well a project based company, this will send it off to the right departments. So just because I've had added these hours and in our world, this actually means that this is a project. So this will be assigned a project team and so on. So they will get all the information. It will be sent to them for uh, work with it. But you can see I have a lot of views up here. Uh, and that's actually a top tip as well. Monday looks in a certain way, but there's nothing to say that I can't maybe do it like this and and view information in a different if they, this is my poison. I like the Kanban style view that, that I can do, for example. Uh, or I want some funnels in here to see how do my deals move back and forth? Um, this is actually an app, so it just takes a few minutes to load because this actually reads the whole uh, activity log of everything you've done. Um, this takes just a bit to load. But this is actually our app called Funnels. Uh, it was actually a prize winner a bit back. But here we can actually see how stuff moves. So this is basically an upgraded funnel type of view, where we can see from analysis, most of them went into proposal, but a few actually was one straight away. And we had a few that moved into disqualified and lost straight on. But then how have it moved and from proposal back to analysis and so on and so forth. So basically 
how does our deals move through the stages? Because as we said, it's not necessarily a one-way street. Just because it has gone to proposal doesn't mean it can't go back to analysis and so on and so forth. Uh, but you have different views. Use them. That's my top tip. Uh, slice and dice your data and find a way uh, that works best for you to view data. I, I tend to use uh, this type of view, but that's because that works kind of best with my way. But I actually have old clients that even they love the map. And if that floats your boat, yeah, you want to be able to click on the opportunity depending on where it is on the map, you can do that as well. You have map views, right? So that's directly linked with uh, uh, the, uh, the Google uh, Map API. So we can see. And I can, of course, go in and I can click on stuff and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's pretty much the main things I wanted to show you today. But the main things here is have a good long think. Because when you open up the Monday CRM, it has a different type of connector. You might have seen that one. Uh, and it connects to your company through the contacts. You get like several um, hierarchies or levels in your linking. I have discontinued that for our usage and that because I feel that the opportunity should be directly linked to the company and directly linked to the contact because those are two different. And also what would happen if Charlie, in this case, would uh, stop his employment at Broderbox? Well, and then I disconnect Charlie yeah, from the company because he doesn't work there anymore, then the deal or the opportunity loses that information too. That's not good. So hence, I want to separate them. Uh, have a few, th um, think about basically how you need to set it up for it to work best for your company. And also, Monday has a very open API in terms of what you can do with it. It has a lot of so-called endpoints. So as you can, uh, or as you saw before, we can easily use it to create functionality that's not maybe in Monday from the start, but that can be created quite quickly. For example, our Chrome extension. So we can quickly grab data from the internet. And I showed you on the um, British version now, endo.co.uk, but it works as well with all of the Scandinavian uh, sites, Crunchbase, etc. Uh, and that's also the power of actually leveraging AI to do this for you because AI doesn't need things to always be in the same spot for it to read it. It can actually interpret the data and get the right data back so we can actually use it. Uh, but have, have a good long think. And also some other stuff that I wanted to show you is actually, I'm going to go in here. Uh, let's search for, yeah, there, now it loaded. So here we have some demo data, uh, things we added. So we have brighter box. So here we can see in the company section, see again, a lot of information going on in here, but I'll open the card instead. So what we can also do here, and something that's quite popular is that we can Have this button here, create G Drive. And that's because we're a Google company. We're not a partnership or anything with Google, but we do use Google and the Google uh, work, uh, work management suite. So basically, Gmail, Google Calendar, and Google Drive. And what we can actually do is we can actually click that button and actually create a uh, folder for this client. So there we go. I can actually open this one now. We can see it has now created in my client's folder, in the United Kingdom folder, because it actually read where is this client located. It created the folder for the client. Of course, you can go more advanced with this and also ads and say, there should be a folder structure in here. There should be some templates added to this. Uh, that's always added in and even with even pre-filled information taken from the CRM system. So there's a lot of functionality we can add. We call this the OmniCloud, and it's something we 
uh, we really, really do like. Uh, but now I have this information here, so I can always easily get into that folder when I'm uh, looking for, for that. But now I'm going to switch back here and I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to see if we have any question. So, yes, good question. Uh, we had a question here about what I do use for making all of these AI stuff. And so it's actually open AI. So what most people would know as chat GPT uh, work in the background, but it's not actually chat GPT. It's their motor, but we're going through the, their APIs. So we're making calls to do this. Um, and to do that, we, as a Make partner, we are, of course, using Make because that makes uh, development and deployment so much quicker. So, yes, some of the features I now showed actually would require you to have uh, a Make account. Uh, for example, the currency exchange things, uh, the uh, Chrome extension uh, uses Make. The drafting of that email and analyzing uh, a company. Yes, that's also through the API. So anything that's basically through the API, uh, API that would require you to have um, that either to be able to host your code or to use something like Make to, to create those. And if you would like our help, yes, then it's going to be Make because that's what we know and uh, can use quickly at least uh, for you to do that. Uh, also, uh, I can also tell you, if you want to take Monday to the next step, Make is actually a really, really good uh, solution for you to do that. Um, so some of the automations I do, which you can do within the system, I've actually redone in Make. And why would I do that? Well, in my case, it is because I can be even more specific with them uh, because I can determine basically everything and anything when I go that route. So it's basically taking Monday's really nice, well, really, really nice tool, but then making it into a really surgical scalpel and really being able to slice and dice what I want at very specific uh, times. So that's basically it. Uh, everything else seems kind of clear cut. We don't have many questions. Uh, and if you have anything, write them now. Uh, I will wait a few seconds. Otherwise, we are coming up to that point where it's time for me to say goodbye. OK, everyone. With that, I hope this gave you some inspiration for what you can do with the Monday CRM. Uh, and I hope if you have any questions that you reach out to me. Uh, I will now also make sure to share this one. So there you have my credentials and my, my contact information on the screen right now. So feel free, give me a call, uh, send me an email and I will try to help you out as best as I can. Now, thank you everyone for coming today, this morning, this evening, depending on where you are in the world. Until next time, guys. Bye.